Hello everybody, this is your boy, Elgin Charles. <laughs> well, oh my God, I got some good food today. You know, I'm from Texas and I love, I love me some good old barbecue. Now in Texas, the barbecue, we barbecue differently because we don't put a lot of sauce. Actually, we barbecue, we smoke it. We don't put sauce on it at all. We just smoke it in one of those pits and then we bring it out. It smells like mesquite or it smells like, you know, hickory uh, and that kind of flavor all smoked up inside of it. Oh my God, it's incredible. And this is Bledsoe. Bledsoe is uh, from, what is this? You got the state of Texas up there. Bledsoe Barbecue, love, low, oh, low and slow like a 64. <laughs> you gotta say 64, see slow. Low and slow, like a 60. Oh, that's the way you got to say it. Anyway, I've been here before and I love it. I thought I'd share it with you because it's one of the best barbecue dishes I know of. All right, let's see what I got. Oh, look at that. Banana pudding. <laughs> All right, we're gonna check that out. Yeah, they really fix What I got here? Ah, I got me chicken breast and a chicken wing, barbecue. All right. Uh oh. We got the greens. You know, we got to have the greens now. This is, this is making me hungry. Oh, oh yeah. You know, you know you can't have barbecue without the potato salad. Come on. Open up. Ooh, open up. Yeah, that's potato salad. Uh, we got chopping to see what it see what it be. What else is in this bag? This is, oh wow. Let me take the top off. Right. This is barbecue ribs right here. Wow. Brisket. That looks good. And this here is hot wings. Anyway, let me get this on my plate. But wait a minute, what else is there? Let me give you sauce to go with it. These are pickles. Oh, Lord, yes, they know what they're doing. This must be a cornbread. More sauces. More pickles and onions. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, maybe that's butter. And more barbecue sauce, okay. Let's just pray so we can get going. Thank you, Father, for this barbecue. Oh my God, may it be nourishment to my body, Father God. We pray for the homeless. We pray for the shut-in, the sick. And we just also pray for a better nation. Lord Jesus, in a better world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, let's get to this. There's that rib, y'all. And I love some brisket. Let me get my utensil. Come on out of there. Sitting there waiting on. Yes. I need two of those. I love to eat. Ooh, I know I'm gonna be full. Uh, the cornbread, just like I said. Mm. And you know, when you got cornbread, <laughs> greens and cornbread, you know that goes good. Goes good together, greens and cornbread. 
cornbread. I say cornbread. Well, all right. I got some kind of, I guess that's, I don't know, maybe, maybe turkey meat with the greens, not sure yet. Oh, the potato salad, yes, yes. See how that look. All right, that's popping. All right, the smoked chicken. Bro, I love this. Some of everything. I'm not gonna eat all this, I'm gonna take a piece of it. Ooh, look at that. Cut right through it, like it wasn't nothing. Ooh, maybe a little bit more chicken. I'm gonna take this thing, green. All right, I'll take this piece. I almost forgot I was on camera. <laughs> I'm really into this. All right. I ordered, we ordered, Crisper ordered, two types of sauce. One is supposed to be spicy. And when it's supposed to be hot. I think that's, yeah, that's the hot one. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's roll. Then we put the barbecue sauce on top of it. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Now that's a good chicken. Mm. Some about Texas barbecue when it's all smoked all the way through. Oh, I forgot about my hot meat. Can't be eating no barbecue without some sweet tea. <laughs> Actually, this is an Arnold Palmer lemonade and tea. But let me get it ready now. Let me get it ready now. All right. Oh, sure. Still got more to do. These things here, they don't come off at all. What the hell? Mm. There you go. A few pickles. But these ain't the dill pickles either. I don't know what those are. Oh, and these are jalapenos. All right. Jalapenos. Regular pickle. Let me see what these greens are giving me. You know, I got to have some of that cornbread on there too. Mm. 
brisket is the bomb. I usually get the lean. It look like not so lean. I mean, it got a little bit of fattiness, more tender, juicier. Mm. Mm, yes. Mm. Good pickle. I'm in heaven. So the greens are good. A little hardy. <laughs> That brisket, oh my God, it's so good. And the cornbread was good. Thumbs up over here. Black salt, y'all. Texas barbecue, all right, let me try the potato salad. The potato salad. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm. You better work it. Oh, child, I'm so hungry. Slow down. I had to tell myself to slow down. Mm, mm, mm. So yeah, if you want some uh, barbecue or bread sauce, stop it's bar. Ah. <coughs> you know it's good when you belch on the stuff. stuff. All right, I guess this is, I can't tell before, but I'm going to check out this hot leg. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. this is Texas for sure. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I wish y'all was here eating with me. We could be having some fun talking. Most of the time we'll be eating. The room will be quiet. Mm. All right. I want to start talking about what's in the news today, but I got to eat a little bit more. And I guess y'all, y'all don't care if I talk with my mouth full. Oh, it's chicken. Oh, I did take a little bit of chicken. Oh, I got that rib up too. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Mm. I want to talk about Lenny Kravitz. He got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah.
really her red smoke me inside a boy. Mm. And that sauce is spicy too. I need some more napkins. Mm, mm, mm. My eyes are getting small. This food is so good. There's an interesting story. I have a connection with so many people in Hollywood, been a hairstylist, owned my salon in Beverly Hills for all these years, for over 35 years. Very interesting career. Then that I started my, my little career back in 86 in, in Beverly Hills as an assistant. And this is how far the story goes back when it comes to how I got to know Lenny Kravitz. They let us about he might be almost 10 years younger than me. No, he's going to turn 60. He's four years younger than me. I think that's what I heard. He's going to turn 60. I'm 64. Don't make that good, Phil. The 60s. Welcome to the 60s. <laughs> Woo, no joke. But this is how the story goes. I was just a young boy. Green behind my ears, looking to find myself in this big city as a hairstyler, determined to be the best that I could be, you know? I was going to do celebrities, and I was going to be on TV, I was going to do everything. And that's how I met Roxy Roker from the Jeffersons, remember her, Helen? Roxy Roker was one of my first clients, celebrity clients. She's so sweet. Uh, Allison was a, did extensions, and she referred Roxy to me. And I must have been about 27, 26, 27. And, uh, and I was doing her hair, you know, giving her some extensions. And she's such a lovely lady. But uh, Roxy, uh, she introduced me to Diane Carroll. That's how I ended up doing Diane Carroll through Roxy. And uh, uh, so anyway, Roxy was uh, uh, got sick, you know? She got diagnosed with cancer. And I was in the heart of, uh, I, was in, I was in ministry school. I mean, I was deep in ministry school. I think I was like, when this happened, uh, I guess it would have been 1990, 1990, 1989, 19, about 1990, 1990. Yeah, 89 and 1990. Uh, so I used to go to her house. She lived up in, uh, what is the place called? Uh, where was it? I was gonna say Ladera Heights, but it wasn't Ladera Heights, it was the other one, Baldwin Hill. Of course, ball here. And she had a house up there on the hill and looked out over the city just like this. Just beautiful, great views. And I, I was over there doing her hair and everything, just, you know, and she was so concerned about if God loved her. And I say, of course God loves you. And she's like, but how do you know? 
I want to feel it. I said, well, you got to accept it by faith, you know, through the word. And I said, and through your spirit, you'll know the inner spirit. And she was going over there to, um, what's his name? She was going to a church. I'm sorry, it's probably, I'm going way back. Uh, uh, Bishop McClendon, she was going to his church. He's moved around a few times, but I think he was over there close to Adams off of La Cienega, somewhere over in that area. So she was going over there to his church. You know, he has a very prophetic ministry. He'll give you the word, uh, prophesy to you and everything. And so Roxy was going over there and stuff. And uh, that one time I was at her house, And I was a young kid, I'm telling you now, this is green behind the ears, believing, just believing God for what the word of God said. And in ministry school, they would teach you how to help people receive their, well, get filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues and stuff like that. And I was trying to explain that to Roxy, how to accept it. And right at that time, Zoe was born. I think Zoe was maybe two years old. And um, it's a true story. That's probably why I'm taking my time. But uh, uh, I said, well, you know, when you just uh, believe God, pray, ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, and then just start, you know, uttering, make an utterance. You know, ba-da, ba-da. You know, that's how you start. She said, well, that doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> I was like, no, but you have to continue and then you got to get in prayer and stuff. She said, you know, me and my granddaughter, we used to t talk to each other and, and she would say, da-da-da-da-da-da. And I would say, da-da-da-da-da. And we, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And now we da and we would have conversations like that. It's kind of like I'm pretending to speak something. I want to feel something. And I was trying my best to uh, get her to hear me more. Or better yet, I was praying to God that the Spirit would, you know, hit her and get her, and she received a heavenly language. But lo and behold, lo and behold at the time we were doing all that, this young boy coming around the corner, and it was Lenny. I think he had a uh, friend over or something like that, and they were just kind of uh, doing something. I saw him. I said, oh, she said, that's my son, Lenny. I said, oh, okay. And Lenny was like a punk rocker way back then. You know, he used to come to Salon. I worked in. Uh, Daily did his hair, which was a great hairstylist back in the day. And then I ran into him again over there at Allison when he and Lisa Bonet got together and they were high for each other, they were just kissing all over each other. They were young and woo, did they, were they into each other? I mean, they were making out in front of everybody. <laughs> but to see him, after all these years, to rise to be the star that he is, the music he played, he was ahead of his time, long time. We are just now trying to catch up with him. Matter of fact, he pulled back and become more conservative, I guess, from being a father and all that. But Roxy Roker, his mother, was my first celebrity client. Right along with Holly Robinson and Natalie Cole. And also, Roxy was the first celebrity to come to one of my Christmas parties. Because I would do Christmas parties every year. And I would invite some of my celebrity uh, clients to come, and Roxy was the first one to come to one of my parties. And she was delightful, was so much, so much. But I miss her so much, you know. She went on to be with the Lord, and uh, she found peace, and she knew that God loved her. And she called it a disease. She didn't say it was a disease. She would call it a disease. So Lenny, I love you because of your mother. I love you because of you too. You have a beautiful daughter. She has grown up to be a wonderful actress. And congratulations, man, on your star on Hollywood Boulevard. You deserve it.
It's feeling so good. Mm. You know, I'm gonna have leftovers, some eat the rest of this stuff tomorrow. It's gonna be just as good. The barbecue is just as good the next day. Mm. Oh. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that notification button. <laughs> Hit me up with a comment. I thought you want to try me some seafood, but you know, me seafood. Woo. But I'm gonna try some. Well, it has been fun. Mm. That brisket. Mm. Well, we are. Mm. Oh, dude, I got this here. I don't know, I'll taste it for y'all. Let's see how I like it. Mm. I'm on full, oh, man. Let's see what this tastes like. Where? I don't know if it looks homemade or not, but let's just check it out and see what's going on. Let's see what's happening. Is that called parfait? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's good. It's sweet as hell. Mm. But I don't see no real bananas in here. You know, it's like a banana flavored custard. And then we got the vanilla wafers throughout it. Mm.
bless them has a chain. I know they got one in LA and they got one in Santa Monica. But thumbs up and thank you so much for tuning in. I love you guys and thank you to all my fans out there that have been following me through all of my shows. Even on live, y'all sit there and listen to me talk about whatever. Y'all hang in there. Y'all give me questions back. I love all you. I love you so much. And uh, continue watching. I appreciate it so much. And have a good night, good day, or good morning, depending on what time you decide to watch this video. Bye-bye. Ooh. I ain't lying, child.